Hi, this is Dave Davis, coming to you from sunny but chilly Independence, Missouri. It's the spring of 2020 and we are currently living in a time of pandemic. I've been working home for two weeks now as church headquarters is closed to the public and most employees are working remotely. Before now, I would have never thought that we would so quickly come to know things like social distancing, self-quarantining, and stay-at-home orders. In these strange times, I find myself being affected in ways that are not always apparent. As we attempt to maintain health and hygiene to avoid further spread of disease, many are more hesitant to respond to the needs of others. If we must be cautious about proximity and stay six feet away from each other, then physical touch seems very risky. So I wanted to share a story of how an act of service that involved physical touch can have a powerful effect and deep meaning. Many of you may already be familiar with this story, which involves Charles Neff and comes from Neff's biography, Apostle of the Poor, written by Matthew Bolton. During his time as an apostle, Charles Neff provided ministry in many countries throughout Asia and Africa. On one of the trips he made to India, Neff had the following experience while visiting a remote village. After arriving in Burhampur, Neff and local church leader G.S. Chala packed up supplies and traveled 45 miles by bus into the jungle. They then walked 14 miles through foothills, dense undergrowth, and small streams on a narrow rocky path to the village of Antarba. Now I've done some hiking in my day, but 14 miles on a narrow path through the jungle seem much, seems much more difficult than I would prefer to do. I can only imagine how tired and sore I would be after that hike, but you see it was even worse for Neff. He would later share that he had naively worn a new pair of shoes on this trip. If you've ever had to wear new shoes on a day when you're doing a lot of walking, you'll understand why this was a problem. Trying to break in new shoes on such an arduous hike must have been a nightmare for him. Each step was likely increasingly painful, and by the end of the journey, his feet were blistered and bruised. Upon arriving at the village, he sat down and removed his shoes. The curious onlookers who gathered around him looked in awe at his injured feet. So he's not only feeling the pain physically, but now has the embarrassment of his first impression in this village showcasing his injuries. In that moment, I would have felt quite vulnerable and hopeful for someone to comfort me. Neff remembered that one toothless old tribal woman walked away back to her hut Returning with a bowl of water and breaking several cultural taboos, she knelt before him and carefully washed and massaged his aching feet. Neff would often recall this act of kindness as one of the finest examples of Christian witness he had ever seen, saying, I believe that was the Lord Jesus coming to me in my time of need. In this story from church history, one woman's willingness to react to a need and treat a recently arrived outsider as a person of worth rather than hold back in fear brought needed comfort to Neff in that moment, but continues to inspire others like me when we hear this story. I recognize that I am fortunate to be able to work from home and limit my risk of exposure. However, there are many that do not have that luxury and must choose between risking their health and getting resources to provide for their basic needs. Even more courageous are the medical professionals, first responders, and volunteers that continually put themselves at risk to respond to the needs of others. I share this story not to advocate for people to make irresponsible choices and disregard reasonable methods of protecting their health and safety, except in times of dire need and necessity, but instead to remind us of the power that a comforting touch can have in someone's life. Even now, there are ways we can connect and provide ministry. With more time at home, we can deepen our connections and relationships with our family and loved ones. Or perhaps we can phone or video chat with an old friend we haven't heard from in a while, or a member of the congregation that may be feeling isolated. Perhaps we can strengthen our prayer life and spiritual practices. 
even if we should be taking appropriate precautions and staying away from each other, we can still provide support for those in need. I recently saw a video online that showed the family, friends, and neighbors of a young girl welcoming her home from her final chemotherapy treatment by lining the road to her house and cheering her on as she came home. Her reaction to their safely distant but still present love and support is priceless. And that video reminds me of all the good stories that are happening every day, even during this time of disruption and despair. Rather than focusing on feeling alone and isolated, let's instead ask ourselves if there are ways that we can still reach out and bring comfort to others.